Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Rebecca, Stu, and the crew. I'm Rebecca. Today is Thursday, and we have a fun fall DIY for you using items from the Dollar Tree. We'll be making this fall home decor. So let's go over the supplies for the first part. We'll need some of these large craft sticks. We'll also need a wood thankful sign. If you can't find one of those, you could use one of the metal words that they have out right now. Some of the miniature pumpkins and one of the small wood pumpkin clips. We'll also need some wood stain. They have this gel stain out right now, some different floral of your choice. And then we'll also be using one of these cat scratch pieces and these wedding reception signs. We're also going to need some paint. I'll be using light blue and white, and then you'll need some different paint brushes, scissors, and possibly even a pencil and a razor blade. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is take these signs that are meant for a wedding reception. I have four different ones. And what I did is I pulled the little stands off the back. They just pop right off. And then I'm going to lay them even across the bottom of a strip of paper to help me line them up. And then I'm going to take the medium sized craft sticks and place those in between so that I have a nice spacing between the arrows. Then I take my extra large craft sticks and I lay those across the bottom to measure off where I'm going to cut these to make them a straight line instead of the sticks with the curves around the edges. So I just mark that off with a pencil and then cut through those with a pair of scissors. Now it's wide enough that I did need to use two craft sticks and we'll do the same thing for the top. We'll make a second set of crossbars for the top of what's going to be a fence. So to do that I just pulled the first set that I made off and I just used my pencil and lined them up on top of each other, mark them, and that cut those down to size. And then I take the pieces and line them up together and trim off any excess to make sure that they are exactly the same. So now what we're going to do is just go over our arrows that we pulled the backs off of with some white chalk paint. You can use some acrylic paint that will do as well. Any color paint will work here and we are going to make this look a little bit darker and aged um, once this dries. So don't worry too much about being able to see the words through the paint. I did end up doing two coats of paint with the chalk paint but um, like I said we're going to age this so it's not really necessary to worry too much about a little bit of the color of the word shining through. So I did paint all four arrows with the white paint and I did um, do two coats of paint and then for the crossbars which we made out of these large craft sticks we are just going to paint the front and make sure you paint the edges as well because you will see the edges but you don't need to paint the back. And for the crossbars here, I only did one coat of paint. So we'll set all those aside to dry. And while those are drying, I mixed up the light blue paint with a tad bit of white just to do a very soft blue color. And I paint a few different pumpkins. So these are just this little four pack of pumpkins you can get at the Dollar Tree. I painted three of them to go at the top of the fence. And I ended up using a few more at the bottom, so I did paint, I believe, six all together. So I used all six of the mini pumpkins and painted them all the same color. And now this little wood sign that used to have a light in the back of it. I picked this up last year, but they sell them throughout the year. So I'm just going to pull it apart. I just want the front of the sign here that says thank you. And all these little pieces just pop right off very easily. Again, you could use the metal signs that are out right now at the Dollar Tree. If you can't find any of these light up signs, they did have them out just about a month ago. So now I'm going to take this gel stain that they just put out last week at the Dollar Tree and a sponge and lightly wipe this on the 
the word thankful and then I'll wipe off the excess with a paper towel. I just work in small sections, dabbing on just a very small amount of the gel stain. And then once I have it covered fairly well, I will just wipe any excess off with a dry paper towel. And then we'll let this dry for a few minutes. Now we're going to take a uh, medium sized paintbrush and we're going to dip just the end of the brush into the gel stain. We're going to lightly brush this over the edges and over the top of the arrow signs. Now you wanna add just a little bit at a time. I really wasn't sure how much I needed to add. I've never used gel stain before, so this was new for me. So what we do is we add just a little bit of the gel stain at a time, and then um, you wanna rub it over top of that there with a paper towel, the dry paper towel, and then you can use a small piece of sandpaper or an emery board, which I like to use, and just scuff up the top. So that'll help remove any large clumps of the gel stain and help give it like a weathered wood grain appearance. And then if you're a little too heavy with the gel stain, you can go ahead and just add a little bit of white paint right over top of it and just blend that in with the dry paper towel. And I'll do the same thing for all four pieces here and also for the crossbar pieces for the fence that we're going to put together that we made out of those large craft sticks. As you can see, the emery board here really helps to scuff it up and give it a weathered wood grain like appearance. And you know, um, in a few spots, um, even with the gel stain and adding a little bit more of the white paint, I was still able to see where they had stamped the sign with the lettering. And so if that is going to bother you, really what you could do is on the back where you pull the stands off of these arrows, you could use that as the front and leave the words towards the back. But I noticed that once I um, added the flowers and things in the crossbars to the front of the sign, I wasn't able to see the lettering and it actually kind of helped give it a little bit more of like a weathered appearance and you're not able to read the words once you put it all together. But if the words showing through just a tad bothers you, go ahead and put those on the back and make the back become the front. So now we're just going to line up these arrows now that they're dry and we're going to place the medium sized popsicle sticks from the um, Dollar Tree in between each row here and that'll help give us a nice space between our fencing. Then I weather the crossbar pieces here with the same gel stain and then we're just going to glue these on at the top and the bottom and you really can just place those where you feel um, it looks nice. I did about um, about four inches down from the top and then I used a pencil to draw a line just so I could make sure that I was putting them back nice and straight once I added the hot glue. So I put those at the top and the bottom and then I just pulled apart some different floral and fall leaves that I have from this year that they've been putting out and glue the pieces on one at a time. I like to work slowly and I like to sometimes lay it out before I glue it on so that I know where everything's going to go and just uh, work kind of on either side and making it look symmetrical. So we're just adding a little bit of like the berries that they have out. And then the pumpkins that we painted, we'll glue those on last year. We'll do the three in the center. And then we'll glue on the word thankful. And on those little crossbars, I made little fake nail marks just with a brown Sharpie. So now we're taking that scratch, um, that cat scratch pad that you can get at the Dollar Tree. We're going to measure that so it's the same length as the fence that we just made and cut off the excess. And then I just trimmed down the um, medium size craft sticks from the Dollar Tree so that they will fit um, all the way across the front of the cat scratch board. And then I cut quite a bit of them. I think I did about 
20 and that will be enough to go all the way across the top and I also cut some of the sticks so they'll go across the front edge and the sides on the edge and then we're just going to take hot glue and glue these all the way across the top we'll do the front edge and the sides and don't throw away those rounded pieces that you cut off to create these straight edge pieces because we're going to use those to create a nice scalloped edge around our um, little shelf here that we're making so I have it all glued on and then I cut all those rounded edge pieces to be the same length and then I just glue those all the way around the edge of the shelf and you want to make sure that you're gluing these right up to the bottom edge so that they all sit the same height So when I got to the end of the front here, it was just a tad bit wider than I needed uh, the last stick to be. So once I glued the last one on, I just trimmed the edge with a pair of scissors. And then I continued to work down the sides of the shelf. So then you just want to go ahead and glue that on with some hot glue. And then we're taking that dark gel stain and we're going to stain all of the sticks here. So I used um, just a sponge or a dry cloth to do the um, gel stain on the shelf that we're doing here. And then for the inside, I wanted to make sure that I got um, really well into the edges there. So I did end up using a paintbrush for pieces of it just to make sure I got all of the pieces covered. And then just again, use a dry cloth to wipe off the excess. And so here's what it looks like finished on the front with all of the wood stain done. And then I added some crossbars on the back just to give it some extra support. I glued those on in the same spot as the crossbars in the front. And then I just painted the whole entire thing black on the back just to give it a nice finished look and I could set it anywhere. So now let's go over the supplies for part two, which is our scarecrow. We're going to use a few of these small little pumpkins. You get those at the Dollar Tree. One of these wood pumpkins and then we'll also need some ribbon or larger burlap ribbon some straw I'm also going to use some of their floral wire and their burlap for a hat and then the lid to a soda bottle or water bottle for the hat we'll also need some twine and paint for the face so we're going to take this little straw hay bale uh, from the Dollar Tree and we're going to measure two sides and then about two inches past um, and then we'll do two pieces the same length those are going to become the legs or the overalls for our scarecrow so you're just going to fold over the bottom edge twice and then glue that down and that will become the cuff of the pants so then we'll fold each side of the burlap ribbon towards the center and we'll add just a little dot of glue at the bottom to hold the pant leg closed. And if you want to, you can clip these with a, a uh, like closed pin or something just to help hold it closed while it dries. And then we'll do the same to the second pant leg. Again, just adding a little dot of glue to the bottom edge. So then we'll put it back on the hay bale to measure where the foot, the knee, and then where the waist will be. Mark where the waist will be, and that's where you're going to glue the pant leg closed at. So we're just putting a dot of hot glue at that line. And then at the top here, we're going to glue these two pant legs together. And this is going to create the top portion of the overalls. So as you can see, we have the top portion and then the two pant legs. Now we're going to cut that floral wire from the Dollar Tree long enough to go all the way through the pant leg and up 
to the top of the overall. And you're just going to weave this in. Now we did glue the waist closed, so you might need to pop the wire out of the bottom of that burlap and then back in at the top. As you can see here, that's what I did. I have a little piece of wire sticking out in the back, but you're not going to see that because that's going to be glued down to the hay bale. So you're just going to continue to fish the wire in on the second piece. So you have the wire on both legs and then we'll cut just a simple um, like rectangle at the top here and fold that back and glue that down and that will create the top of the overalls and then we have the straps here you might need to glue those closed so they'll stay together and I cut out a little um, pocket out of the burlap ribbon the brown burlap ribbon and I glue that onto the top and I made two patches for the legs and I just attach that with some hot glue And now we're going to work on creating this shirt. So I'm just going to use some of this um, scrap material that I had from a t-shirt. It's gray and two small pieces of wire. Now take a small piece of wire and you're going to glue that right to the center of the rectangle for the sleeves. These are about a two inch long piece of fabric and they're about an inch and a half wide. we're just going to glue the edges down to create a nice edge on either side of the sleeve. And then we'll fold this down one more time to cover up that piece of wire in the center. And now that we have both of the sleeves completed, we're going to take a small piece of that blue burlap ribbon and I just cut it down to a smaller piece and then I glue that around the edge of the sleeves just to create a cuff. And this will be so that I can use that little opening there. Um, I'll be able to stick some straw in the end of the arms so it looks like he has hay coming out or straw coming out of his arms and legs. So you just want to wrap that little piece of ribbon around with some hot glue, but leave that bottom edge free so that you can stick a little bit of the straw up inside there. But you just want to add a tiny bit of hot glue and then cut off any excess that you may have. And then for the larger portion of the shirt, we're just going to take this rectangle and fold it in half and glue the bottom edge and then glue the right edge closed. Then we'll fold it right side and we'll put, make sure you push those corners out so you have a nice um, edge. Then just fold in that other edge and glue that closed. You're just making a little square here. Now on the back of the overalls, you're going to glue one arm to either side of the straps of the overalls. Then flip it over and then you'll tuck that shirt down, make sure it fits right. And then if it does, just go ahead and add the hot glue. And then attach it to the back of the overalls. You just want to make sure before you glue it down that you don't have it too wide and it fits behind the overalls. And then you can go ahead and bend your arms any way you like. And then we're going to add that straw to the um, hands and feet area. So we're just going to twist a few pieces together, trim off any excess if it's too long, and then add just a little dot of hot glue up inside of the legs and the arms and put the hay up inside of those so that it looks like it's coming out of the feet and out of the sleeves. I added a few patches and put a few um, pieces of straw coming out of the patches so it looked like it was kind of like, you know, a ratty looking overall. So then we'll add some straw around the neck area as well. Now we're going to paint or draw on the scarecrow face. So the first thing you want to do is you just want to paint one of these wood pumpkin clips from the Dollar Tree. Um, 
I'm just going to paint that with um, light mocha or like a linen color paint and that'll help it look like a burlap sack for the face. And for the face, I ended up using Sharpie markers to draw the details of the face. It's such a small pumpkin. It was just easier to do a nice detailed face without having to try to be very meticulous with a small paintbrush. Now we're going to make the hat. So we're just going to take a piece of burlap ribbon and put that right over the soda bottle lid. And then we're going to attach it with a rubber band and then take a piece of twine, wrap it around a few times, and then just tie that in a knot to help secure it to the lid of the soda bottle. And then you'll cut off any excess twine that you have. Then unscrew the lid from the soda bottle and you now have your little hat. So to help the brim of the hat stay up, what you wanna do is take some hot glue and glue it right around the edge of the hat and then take the um, burlap piece and then just kind of stick it up towards the side as I'm doing here. And if you hold it in place, it'll help the brim of the hat to stay up and out instead of folding down in on itself. And you can add some extra details to the hat if you like. I just added a little bit of the blue burlap to make it look like patches on the hat. Then I took some straw and I rolled it up into a ball and I stuffed the lid of the hat. And that'll help hold it onto the head when we glue it all together. Plus it looks like he has straw coming out of the hat, which is fun. So then once we have that all done, um, just add a little bit more hot glue and make sure you have enough straw so that it will stick out around the face. So now for the clip here, I'm just going to cut the leaf off of it with a pair of scissors and that will help it to attach to the hat a little bit easier. And I just cut a notch through the straw with my scissors and add some hot glue in that little groove that I created and then glue the pumpkin to the hat. And I ended up taking off half of the clip that's on the back of the pumpkin and that's going to create like the neck. That way the pumpkin, like the head, will sit up a little bit higher on the body. So what we're going to do now is just take a little bit of pink paint and just dab it on with my finger to create some rosy cheeks. And then using the black Sharpie, I'm just going to draw on some stitching tight patterns for the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. And then I did take a Dollar Tree metallic white marker that they have out several times a year. And I'm going to add a few highlights to the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And now I have that clip that I pulled off of the back, just half of it. That's what I'm going to glue onto the back of the scarecrow. And that'll just help the head sit up a little bit higher. And then you'll just glue that right to the pumpkin.
And here's the head. As you can see, it sits a little bit higher with the straw under the neck. It looks really cute that way. So now we're going to take that small straw hay bale um, from the Dollar Tree. They sell them every year. We're just going to glue this to the corner. And then we'll glue the scarecrow onto the hay bale and you can adjust him any way you like and make sure you adjust the arms so that they sit right. They get a little bit out of place a little bit while you're attaching it. And then take your floral and add some more floral and pumpkins to the bottom just like we did at the top. And then I added a few of those small pumpkin seeds um, to add some extra color in detail. And I had a few um, sitting with the scarecrow and on the hay bale. And this is the whole thing all put together. There's lots of pieces, but it's a lot of fun to make. If you don't add the scarecrow, it actually comes together a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. But I wanted to make sure I gave lots of instruction of how to make the scarecrow, which kind of made the video a little bit longer than it would have been. I just wanted to make sure it was clear how to make him. And so this is the whole thing all done. I love how it turned out. I hope you guys do too. If you guys like these DIY videos, I post them every Thursday. I try to use mainly items from the Dollar Tree. There's quite a few different fall ones that we have out already this year. And then there's lots of other crafting DIY videos that we have done throughout the year that you might also enjoy. And then every Friday, I post what is new for the week at the Dollar Tree. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.